Welcome to Bold Strong. This is the Bold Strong Podcast, and t- today I have Richard Bucher with us. And Richard is a author, speaker, and a coach, has been doing this for quite a long time, and uh, is going to tell us a little bit about himself and some of his experiences. But he's been uh, helping businesses and business leaders for quite some time across, uh, across Canada, across Western Canada in particular, and today he's with us here in Calgary. Welcome. Thanks, Greg. Thanks very much for coming. So, all right, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your practice and what you're doing and so we have a, a good idea of who you are. But it fits in a, in a, a few buckets. I, I work with leaders and developing leaders to help them raise their game, be more mm-hmm. of the leader they, they aspire to be. I work with individuals who are in transition, so they're in between jobs through no fault of their own trying to figure out how do I get to where I want to be next. And then I work with individuals who are in career and feeling like I don't feel like I'm getting any traction here. I'm being mm-hmm. passed over for promotions. I don't really know how I ended up in this space, and I don't know what to do next. So I'll spend time with them, helping them really get traction on where they want to go. Um, and it, it, probably a lot of people aren't even aware that this is like a piece of the industry. Like this is an actual, this exists everywhere. There's lots of individuals that do this. You do it, and you've been doing it a long time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and it's part of the overall HR industry, I guess. It maybe is part of the way we see it. And the way it would affect um, probably a lot of people in our world would be that when uh, companies lay people off, they would engage transition coaches to help those individuals move into the next career. Is that Yeah, absolutely. Fair? And one of the critical pieces in that whole journey, of course, is working with the leaders who have to announce the termination of the, the mm-hmm. certain employees. Probably one of the hardest things they have to do in their career, and they struggle with that. Um, and I've seen devastating circumstances where they've let go you know, in the order of 1,200 people mm-hmm. in a day, and, and each individual manager has let go 50, 60, 80 people in a day, if you can right. imagine what that's like, and spending ten, in the order of three to seven minutes with each of wow. them, yeah. and really not being able to catch their breath until the day is done, and uh, they're just shell-shocked. So uh, if I was better prepared, I would have uh, remembered to look up the name of that one company. It was a, some mortgage company in the States where the... Uh, CEO just let go of 900 people yep. on <clears throat> he just did it through email or through some process it wasn't yeah. a yeah that's an interesting way of going it, extremely efficient mm-hmm. uh, not in any way compassionate no it would be a, a tantamount to Alberta Health Services saying you know we're noticing that there's a lot of people with critical health issues and many of them are frankly dealing mm-hmm. facing a life threatening illness so rather than meet with them individually why don't we just get them in a, in a big room once a week and we'll do one announcement mm-hmm. a week? And anybody hearing that would think, where did you find this nut bar? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course we wouldn't do that. No. How horribly inhumane. Yeah. I don't know how we get to a place where it's okay to let a hundred people go or a thousand people go because mm-hmm. it's that number and it's sufficient. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a leader's job. You do it one conversation at a time. It hurts like hell. It's tremendously mm-hmm. disturbing and it should be. Right. That's I, how you know you're doing it right. I heard an interesting, you know, interesting counterpoint because I would 100% agree with you. And then one guy said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I, if I don't have to get dressed and go to work and they just send me a text and say, don't bother, I'm, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was so dispassionate from the yeah. employee side. Yeah. It was kind and of And it's not to suggest that if you're the employee and you, you're not feeling some emotional response, mm-hmm. that there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Because that isn't always the case. I recall one, I th- one employee of an educational institution interrupted. Uh, talking with him, he said, sorry to interrupt, I'm sure you're a really nice man and very good at what you do, but but do I have to sit here with you? Do, do we have to have this right, conversation? Right, sure, yeah, that's right. I said, absolutely not. Yeah. And he said, so this amount of money in the letter here, that do, do, what do I have to do to get that? And I said, well, you signed that release, but other than that, that's it. Can I sign that and give it to you right now? I said, yeah. Absolutely. He's really? And so he signed it, and he's literally bouncing off the walls. He's so ecstatic. He was wow. planning, as it turned out, to, to run for office. Oh, this was nice. going to be the stipend he needed to make that happen, and he was thrilled that this was yeah. happening. What a great opportunity. Yeah. That's pretty That's interesting.